Okay, we'll move on to the final presentation. So we're talking about the papillomavirus genome. We've heard some about its evolution, about new methods for its characterization, a new bioinformatics tool, and now we're going to talk a little bit about naming. This is all important in our publications and how we actually describe the different genomes and classify them. It's particularly relevant if any of you have wandered off into any other viral field and tried to figure out uh, what viral sequence you have, uh, it becomes very complicated. So for papillomavirus nomenclature, we have a committee, the Papillomavirus Study Group, of which I am the chair. Uh, today we're going to talk about seven uh, new things or things we'd like to know about as far as papillomavirus nomenclature. So the study group of papillomavirus is part of the ICTV, which is part of the virology division of the International Union of Microbiological Societies. This is really the group that sets the names for the world. The group comprises 17 members with diverse expertise in geographic representation. Uh, as you indicate, uh, Joachim Dillner is now uh, the head of the Papillomavirus Reference Center, and I'll speak a little bit about that uh, shortly. So just a few words about papillomavirus nomenclature. The official taxonomy by the ICTV is predominantly, if not exclusively, involved in naming taxons at the family, genus, and species level. These names should be italicized uh, the first letter in capitals, and really when you're referring to the taxon, it should not really be abbreviated in its official usage. However, below the species level, the papillomavirus study group really has authority to make recommendations. That is, we can assign types, variant lineages, sublineages, uh, genomic nomenclature such as what is position one and how we describe SNPs and indels, which is going to be important as we're approaching a flood of sequence information. And the way the whole thing works is that the group proposes, puts a proposal to the ICTV, usually based on the publication that we prepare, and they then vote on it. And they are very slow. It's very behind kind of modern uh, technology of searching. Uh, but that does set the standards which uh, the journals and other national agencies really require uh, to at least meet those standards. But below the species level, uh, in fact, we have authority as a community to order and name things as we see fit. So the main change that occurred uh, last year was that species names had been changed from the name of a specific virus. So the species group used to be called human papillomavirus 16. They now officially recognize the taxon alpha papillomavirus 9. So that's the official designation for the species group. We can all use alpha papillomavirus 9. We've been using it to represent the viruses in the group, but now it's actually the official taxon nomenclature for species. And there's the relationship between the official uh, ICTV nomenclature and what the language that we use. So when you're referring to the theoretical taxon, you should use the uh, proper uh, spelling and uh, italization. The uh, rules for orthography are present in the ICTV website. When you're referring to viruses, then they can be abbreviated. Now, just a moment to talk about the new human papillomavirus reference center. Ethel Michelle, for a number of years, has run this. It's now been transferred to Joachim Dillner at, in uh, Sweden. And so the submission of potential novel papillomaviruses will be the same. The complete genome needs to be uh, sent. Uh, the L1 open reading frame should be greater than 10% different from all other uh, previously described papillomaviruses. There hopefully will be a website where one could check whether an L1 open reading frame is novel. Uh, this is a work in progress, and uh, Joachim Dilna will talk about this more uh, tomorrow afternoon. Uh, but one of the nice features is that uh, the Reference Center will send out clones to non-commercial academic users with approval of the clone owners. That's a real service to the community. Uh, now, just a summary of what's new in total viruses. So, the, although PAVE has 241, there are 266 uh, types of viruses 
that have been designated specifically for the human papillomaviruses were up to number 160. That means there are 156 viruses. The number of uh, isolates and the numbers don't exactly correspond because there's four numbers uh, which are basically empty. Uh, so there's 156 papillomavirus and lots more to come. This is now a tree, not that you can really make sense of, but just to give you an idea of the complexity of papillomavirus taxonomy and topology, although this is not really a, meant to be a study of topology and evolution, but really for taxonomy, for naming species in genera. And if, if you can't see it, but there's a lot of action in the gamma papillomaviruses within the human clades. Uh, just to uh, review some of the more recent, as I said, we're up to 160, and most of the new types are being identified in the beta and gamma uh, species, uh, in the beta and gamma genera, and there are now 13 alpha papillomavirus species, 6 beta papillomavirus species, and 17 gamma papillomaviruses. I, I refer you to poster CP360, where there is a discussion of the papillomavirus uh, evolution and species groups. But there are a lot of new viruses that are being identified, particularly in these genera. So the animal papillomaviruses, there is a repository at the American Museum of Natural History. There's a, we believe there's a need for curation and naming to keep things straight. However, the rules are not always being followed. Um, and this is something that we're going to be discussing in the uh, working group uh, later uh, this morning. So now, classification of HPV variants is becoming particularly important as we're getting into deep sequencing and sequence variation characterization with phenotype. So the, the key to variant nomenclature is that different groups can use different regions of the genome and come up with the same variant lineage. This will allow us to collapse all the different studies for meta-analysis, which will be very important as we're going to need more power to look at the phenotype of different genetic differences amongst variants. And the uh, curation is basically uh, one percent mark is where we're now defining variant lineages in the 0.5 to one percent, a sublineage. And again, this is a work in progress as we're discovering new variants uh, from different parts of the world. Uh, lineages and sublineages will change, but it will allow us as a community to analyze variants for phenotypic differences. And we're all aware that HPV-16 variants, particularly the non-European, have a more are more associated with cancer than are the European lineages. So there appears to be a genetic effect even at the type or variant level. Uh, this is just for HPV-18. Uh, uh, there'll be a talk on Wednesday morning. This, that we're moving towards a alphanumeric nomenclature for variants where the A uh, variant lineage or the A1 sublineage always includes the reference sequence. Now, what are the new issues? So one of the issues that we have to deal with are naming the starting position of each reference sequence. This becomes really important as we're getting into how do we describe variants, so the naming of nucleotide, amino acid variants, indels. We need a common language amongst us all when we publish our papers and we describe new changes that we all use the same language in a new paper coming out from the papillomavirus group uh, later this year or the beginning of next year, we, we will describe a system for a common usage similar to what they use in the human genome. And then we have to deal with uncurated papillomavirus sequences in the gen bank. There are people now that are using next gen sequencing, describing full genomes that are kind of compiled bioinformatically, and what do we do about those? Uh, you know, I actually believe that we should curate them in some un, uh, unapproved or unclassified manner. Nevertheless, they're there in GenBank. If someone describes some new sequences and searches, they will come up, and it would be nice as a community for us to be able to deal with those and then to get them into official nomenclature uh, with cloning and submission to uh, one of the databases.